r slash credit. Do you know someone who got fired on their first day? What did they do? His last job, he was driving cars from where they were dropped off to where they were sold at auction. He was driving this really nice BMW sitting at a stop sign at the base of a hill. Semi truck carrying logs loses its brakes and slams him at 50 plus miles per hour. He then proceeds to T-bone another car while still getting pushed by the semi. Him T-boning the other guy knocked him out from in front of the semi and into another car which had seen what was happening and slid to a stop. The semi went over the hill and landed in the creek at the base. He got cut out of the car then airlifted out along with the driver of the semi and the passenger of the car he T-boned and when he called his boss after emergency surgery, the boss fired him. He sued the hell out of the company for wrongful termination and he's been living off the money for 3 years. I worked with a guy named Daryl for about 7 hours. Daryl was probably in his late 40s early 50s and was a pretty intimidating looking guy. He was probably 6 feet 6 inches, 250 lbs plus, muscular, bald, and a full beard. He was hired as a produce manager at the grocery store I worked at. I talked to him for a while, and he seemed to be an extremely nice guy. He said he was in the military most of his life, went to college when he was in his 40s, and ended up getting a master's in industrial engineering. He was telling me how depressed he was that no one would hire him because of his age and was planning on working here while job hunting. We were almost off work and the assistant manager came to talk to us. I forgot to mention that the assistant manager was an enormous asshole. He came over, introduced himself to Daryl, and immediately began criticizing his first day's work. I don't know exactly what Daryl did, but me made a minor mistake that made the assistant manager ask him do you even know what a serrano pepper is? Daryl defended himself and apologized saying he would fix whatever mistake he made. The assistant manager then delivered the final blow and said Noah, it looks like we've hired a produce manager who doesn't know shit about produce and laughed. Daryl then said what every employee there had wanted to say at one point, you're not going to talk to me like a fucking child. The assistant manager fired him on the spot. Got fired on my first week after training when the schedule came out. I was in high school and during the interview I told the manager interviewing me that I could only work 20 hours a week. I didn't mind 8 hour days on weekends, but during the week I couldn't do it. As soon as training ends, the schedule comes out and I'm scheduled to work 39.5 hours with several 8 hour shifts on weekdays after school. I went into the manager's office and told him that I couldn't do it and so he said, this is why we hired you, either do it or you're fired. Well, that was that. I was hired at a Kai Kai's in high school and when you're under 18, you can't work past 9pm in my state, this was like 15 years ago. I was a busser and every night my boss made me stay past 10, some nights until 11. I tried to explain every night that it was illegal to keep me this late and I needed to still do homework and then get up at 7 for school. He didn't care and basically ignored me every night. My mom called and ripped him a new one after 2 weeks and I never went back. I'm confused as to why employers would hire high schoolers when they know they obviously can only work part time hours. I had just arrived at Great Lakes for boot camp. This was in 1991, and we are standing in line for our first introduction to what is known in the military as Operation Golden Flow or our first urinalysis test. As I'm standing in a very long line and tip tapping around because I have to piss so much, a guy standing behind me taps me on the shoulder and asks what we are waiting for. I look at him and tell him a urinalysis. He looks at me and asks me what a urinalysis is, so I tell him to see who has taken any drugs recently. He nods, shrugs and says well, I guess I shouldn't have smoked that crack last night. He was serious. Now, he officially wasn't fired that first day, but about two weeks later, when his results came back he was. So yes, you can say that he was fired that first day, but had to suffer for a few weeks until officially let go. My company hired temps for this big job. We didn't have a lot of space, so temps had to double up in cubicles. 
I did feel very bad for them, but some of their actions were hilarious slash terrible. Our laptops require a password to log in before doing anything. It's a grey screen with prompts for the username and password. Pretty simple stuff. One guy had his username and password written on a post-it note. He then spent 2 hours trying to figure out how to log in. He didn't realize he had to press enter. 2 hours. Another guy's was chugging along at his task. His cube mate was sneezing or talking or something. His reaction? Slap her. He got escorted out of the building. The next day, he shows up to work again like nothing happened. He was escorted back out and told to please not return. Most of the temps were nice and did just fine. Some made you wonder if they would ever get a full time gig. Dude was fired not even an hour into his first day. I worked at a warehouse for about 3 months and the company was moving to a new location. So we were taking all the boxes off the racks, putting them on pallets, wrapping the pallets, and loading them onto several different trucks. One of my bosses was sent over to help train the new guy, but the new guy didn't know he was working with a boss. Halfway though our first pallet, new guy dropped a box he was supposed to catch, because he was too busy texting. He starting bitching about how the box landed on his foot and he wasn't sure if he could keep lifting boxes now, so we sent him with a different group that was taping up the pallets. Once we finish our second pallet, the boss and I take it over to be tapped. The boss specifically requested that the new guy take care of it. Turns out new guy is missing. I'm now given the task of finding him. 10 minutes later I find a pile of clothes sitting on the ground in the back of the warehouse. I walk around it and absolutely could not believe what I was seeing. This guy took the clothes out of several boxes, broke the boxes down, and laid them out on the floor, and I shit you not this guy was fucking recording himself breakdancing. I was hired by IBM in August 1999. On my first day, I was chatting with my new manager. I casually mentioned I was a single father of two young children. Among other things two hours later, I was let go. She was concerned that I would not be able to meet the schedule. Had she asked, I would have reassured her. I asked her to reconsider and told her I'd be in touch. She said her decision was made and I shouldn't bother. I'll let her have two weeks to think it over before I called and asked how she would like her name spelled in the discrimination report I was submitting to the Ministry of Employment. She asked, for what? I answered marital and family status. She spelled her name. I said goodbye. I checked the time. My phone rang 48 minutes later. It was a senior department head with a job offer, not an interview. A position waiting for me with assurances that they are a diverse department representing all ethnicities, abilities, yada yada. I worked there off and on until 2009 and the massive layoffs hit. The last software company I worked at would try to hire cheap labor coming out of India and Pakistan. The guys apparently had CS degrees slash were fluent in the major programming languages slash had years of experience slash etc. When they showed up it was obvious that getting a degree over there often just means learning English and telling them what degrees you want printed out. These guys had no idea how to use Windows, what a database was, etc. I've seen them print out code, then go to the bathroom and talk on the phone to someone back home for an hour. It was actually pretty sad, they'd be fired after a few hours and usually left the office crying. I got the impression these guys had been scammed back home. The universities would take huge amounts of money from their families, focus solely on making them look good on paper, then fly them off to the west knowing full well they are unemployable. Was in the first couple days of two week training at University of Phoenix for recruiter, sales, jobs. There were four rows of desks with computers facing the front of the room. Instructor is mid-sentence when two it guys walk in without saying a word. One grabs this guy's computer tower, while the other rapidly unplugs all the cords. They take the tower and just walk out. The guy that was sitting there looks a bit dumbfounded and a little sheepish. The rest of us are a little confused. The instructor is thrown off a little, but the continues on. The guy who lost his computer sits there awkwardly for 20 minutes until the next break when someone from ours comes and escorts him out. 
Turns out the guy was surfing porn during his training for his brand new job and clearly knew at the time why they came and took his tower. He just had to sit there while a class of 20 other people did their own internal math on what he was just caught red-handed for. This is a little different than being fired on the first day, but it was still pretty odd. I was a sophomore in college and frequented raves in the next town over on the weekends. I drove back to my college town super early one Sunday morning, sober, mind you, to find the college-aged man slumped against my front door, passed out. The apartment complex I lived in was a big party scene, so finding the assorted reveler was not uncommon, but never directly on my door. He was dressed in a suit and tie and had a briefcase, which I found a bit odd for someone of our age, especially post-party. So I attempt to wake the guy because uh, I have to get into my apartment, and b, he obviously needs some sort of assistance with the state he's in. I can barely rouse him, the dude is obviously still wasted. I finally manage to get him to drink some water and eat a few slices of bread, and he becomes slightly more coherent. He starts bemoaning the fact that he has his first day at a new job in the morning. He had come to the party from an interview, thus the suit and briefcase. I still can't get his name or address, but I tell him I'm going to call him a taxi and he is going to have to take it from there. The taxi comes and whisks him away, my good deed done for the year. The next day I have to work. We have a new guy on the team. Guess who it was? I got fired on day 2. It was for an inside sales position at a company that sells farm machinery. I had been interviewed by a corporate hour guy at another location, told that their current inside sales guy was near retirement and they needed someone to work with him for a year, get to know the customers, be ready to take over when the time came. It was a step down in pay and responsibility from my previous job in outside sales, but it was close to home and I needed the paycheck. I showed up on my first day just before 8am and dressed to work in the office. The branch manager was on vacation, so I was introduced to their head sales guy, who was also kind of an assistant manager. He informed me I would be starting work in the warehouse, sorting parts into bins. Okay, I figured, he wants me to put some sweat time in. No problem. So I start in with the manual labor, it's mind numbingly boring, but I do a good job, not wasting time, or fucking the dog. At lunch I drove home to change out of my business clothes and into something more appropriate for that kind of work. At the end of the day the assistant manager asked how I did, I kind of shrugged and said I put everything where it was supposed to go. He didn't like that answer and asked if I was unhappy working in the warehouse. I told him it just wasn't what I expected from the job description I'd been given, but I understood if that's where he wanted me to start. The next day I again showed up just before 8am, was immediately sent to the back to work in the warehouse again, worked like a dog all day. At the end of the day the assistant manager called me into his office and told me I was fired. He found me insubordinate and unwilling to work. He didn't like that I showed up just before 8 instead of 15 to 20 minutes early. He didn't like that I left at lunch to get changed. He didn't like that I left at 5 when the call sounded. He felt I should have stayed later to put extra time in to show how excited I was to work for the company. I didn't try to argue with him because he was an obnoxious prick and I knew it wouldn't do any good. The next day I emailed the corporate guy who had interviewed me in the first place, told him I wasn't given a fair trial and didn't even get to meet the guy I was supposed to be working with. He told me the assistant manager had been with the company for a long time and was a trusted member of their team and whatever he said was the way it was. I give them the finger every time I drive by. I work for a pizza delivery and I have two stories, both about delivery drivers. A very quiet girl was hired and it was immediately apparent she was not going to last. We gave her a uniform shirt and hat, but her pants were about 5 sizes too big for her, and they were being cinched with a belt. The pants gathered around her waist in huge ruffles. Also, she was holding pizzas under her arm, like a book, which means all the toppings were sliding to one side. 
She kept doing this and putting them into the hot bags the same way, like you tuck something into your purse. After a couple of runs and customers being camped both times, she was taken off the road and we tried to work with her inside instead. It was then we noticed the smell of shit. Apparently, she had lost control of her bodily functions during the day and didn't bother to ask to go to the restroom or just go. She was told to go home and she didn't come back. This was the girl's first job ever and it was obvious she had no idea about shifts, peak time, or being required to stay and help sometimes when it's busy. She initially started crying when she said she was hungry but she'd only been there maybe 2 hours. Then she sulked in a corner while the rest of us were busy during dinner rush. Finally, once the rush was cleared, she asked if she could go home. When my then manager asked if she'd do some side work before she left in a vain hope that she'd try to redeem herself, she then wailed, pizza is not my life. It might be yours, but it's not mine. My boyfriend is waiting for me. Ah, uh, Yep, she left that night. For weeks, we'd joke around, pizza's not my life. I work a highly physical intensive job that hires through a temp agency. They do not tell these folks what they will be doing and that they will be doing it in a factory that is essentially a giant oven. I have seen my fair share of day one fires. One of the most memorable ones was a larger guy that thought the bathroom room would save him. He would go for extended periods of time after only working for a small bit. Plant manager picked him up with a golf cart the last time and drove him to the door. Another just told our supervisor fuck this shit and got the same treatment about 20 minutes later after standing about. In the two years I have worked there I have easily seen 50 plus temps come and go. I'm almost always in a state of training someone. My favorite ones are the people who disappear after having to get something from their car or never coming back from first break. A lot of dollar bills have been exchanged after taking bets on who comes back the second day. Edit. We had another guy, not fired come through. Worked with him for about 4 days and he just got slower and slower. Well we were hanging parts on the line and we have to be careful because you work over a 3 foot deep pit. Well this guy was dragging ass and stepped forward and right into that pit. I have never seen someone so happy to have to go to the air. Uh. He didn't come back. Fucking pull. In college, I worked part time at my school's it help desk. Being it, the job attracted its fair share of nerdy and socially awkward people, but most were easy to get along with. There was this one guy, however, we'll call him Ted. Ted was pretty much a dick. He was an arrogant know-it-all who thought he was smarter than everyone. On top of that, he would always take his shoes off in the office to air out his disgusting hobbit feet, and he would play jam band music on speakers, refusing to use headphones, which I found very annoying. Anyway, Ted was a year ahead of me, and when it came time for him to graduate, he somehow landed a job as a senior systems administrator for a pretty large insurance company in the area. Everyone was surprised because Ted was a music major, not a computer science major, and few of us thought he had the certifications and knowledge to do the job. But good for Ted, we thought, at least he's gone. On his last day as a student employee, a Friday, Ted emailed what can be described as nothing other than a scree to the entire department via the listserv. In it, Ted bashed the management as incompetent and basically just pointed out how poorly he thought everything was run, how unintelligent some of the employees were, etc. He ended the email with, screw you guys, I'm going home to give you an idea as to how Ted wrote. This blindsided our supervisor, Jenna, and made her look terrible in front of the university's VP for it. So, needless to say, she was pissed at Ted. The next Monday, Ted started his job at the insurance company. And that same day, he sent a very heartfelt apology to Jenna for his email. Obviously his apology couldn't undo the damage, but Jenna thought his admitting the error of his ways was a mature thing to do, that is, until she began going through applications for a full-time position in the id department and discovered that Ted had applied for one that very afternoon. Apparently, Ted had shown up to his new job and by noon realized he was in way over his head. 
he quit that same day, and, knowing he had burned every last bridge at the university, sent Jenna an apology hoping he'd be able to get back in her good graces and have his old job back. Obviously, there was no chance in hell Jenna would ever hire him again, and the fact that his apology was utter bullshit just made her despise him even more. So, at least for that short while, Ted was unemployed with no references. I got fired two days into the job, though it was more of a voluntary quit. I would have been fired if I hadn't walked out, though. I was working at a small time computer sales slash repair shop, and our supervisor was extremely hot headed. The owner was basically a total pushover, and she let the guy run things, even though he'd regularly verbally berate employees, and was even known to steal sales, so he'd get the commission. I know all of this because I'd regularly heard my friend, who was working there, complain about it, but I needed a job and he knew he could get me in, so I went with it. I was doing sales, and part of that is trying to sell people on the features they need without upselling. It's even a store policy not to upsell someone something they don't need. For example, don't sell grandma a $1500 gaming computer if all she needs is a $300 basic model for ML and web browsing. So, I'm talking to a guy that says he needs a computer for his college classes and he'd like to play some games but doesn't need a full feature gaming box because he mostly only plays World of Warcraft and a few older games. After 20 minutes of running through the options, he settles on a $700 machine with a lower tier video card and enough RAM to comfortably run WoW. As I'm finishing the sale, here comes a Charlio manager asking me what the problem is. I tell him there's no problem, and he immediately interrupts me and asks the guy which system he's buying. He then tells me to go grab some stock from the back, which I do, and when I get back, he's trying to sell the guy our second most expensive gaming system. The guy decides he can't afford it and leaves the shop, at which point our sole manager shakes his head, looks at me, and literally says I don't think you get how sales works. If you hadn't short sold the guy on a cheaper machine, he might have gone for that. I barely contain my rage at first, until he adds this little gem, I don't think you're cut out for sales. Why don't you stick to the register? I lost it, looked him right in the eye, and said why, don't you go fuck yourself? And just walked out. I didn't bother with my time card, just hopped in my car and drove home. They tried to call me a few times, but I blocked them. Never heard from them again, and they ended up going out of business a year later. I used to work for a tow company, I was a dispatcher, and on our screen, whenever we get a call we can see where it is on the map of the city, and where all of our trucks are in real time. One of our new guys was near this distressed customer, like a mile or less away, so naturally I gave it to him. Minutes later, after being distracted by another driver and customer, I noticed the new guy zipping back and forth from where he has to be. As I radio him, he says he can't find the location, so I'm like okay, maybe there is some little street with no indication on where exactly he is. So, I call the customer to get further information, and according to him, he has been watching the driver go back and forth as he's been waving him down, and the car is the only car on the side of the street. 20 minutes pass, he's still zipping back and forth, as my boss is watching what's happening behind me, luckily another driver was close by, and we got a guy out there, and customer got taken care of. My boss hollers on the radio for the new guy, to come in for a talk. As he arrives, he goes into my boss office, and they start talking, I can hear everything as the walls are pretty thin. And now my boss is a sweet old man who is a Korean war vet, and as such he expects some respect and proper mannerism from everybody. And he kindly asks for the guy to take off his glasses. He refuses. My boss says again sternly, take off your glasses when talking to me. Seconds later I hear, are you fucking coked up? Why the hell are your eyes dilated and red? Get out of my office and business, I don't want to see you again. Get the fuck out. I have too many of these, but I worked night audit for a holiday and in college. Was training a new guy that was extremely obese and not real bright. 
we would leave cookies out for the guests during second shift and several were always left by third. I swear I only turned my back for a moment to demonstrate the computer system and the last three were gone. Around 3 a.m., I finished dropping off the newspapers and can't find him anywhere. Find him in the kitchen baking a dozen more cookies just as a snack. I tell him that's not what the cookies are for, and he tries to bribe me by offering half. After setting up the breakfast bar in the morning, I explain that we can have anything that isn't packaged, like granola. Later find out that he ate 8 of the individually wrapped toaster pancakes along with all our syrup. Guests kept complaining to me they couldn't find any syrup. My manager promptly fired him. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.